Dr. Aidan Elliott, and this is the complete guide to Shakespeare. Welcome to this video on Shakespeare's Macbeth. In the next few minutes, I'll use just ten quotes from the play to help you get an understanding of Macbeth's character and the themes of the play. The first thing we hear about Macbeth is, for brave Macbeth, well, he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel. Steel, incidentally, is what uh, is called a metonym and represents his sword. What we learn first shapes our view of Macbeth, even when he does bad things during the play. And we learn here that he's brave, that he's prepared to fight against fate or fortune. In an image that will be repeated throughout the play uh, is that the new honours that come to Macbeth are like new clothes. They'll take a while to cleave or hang properly until he's worn them for a while. The quote says, New honours come upon him like our strange garments, cleave not to their mould but with the aid of use. This idea is developed later in the play when a character says, Now does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Now, much of the first half of Macbeth is about who can be trusted, and King Duncan, who is shortly to be murdered by Macbeth, makes the following point. There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. The naivety of Duncan is that he looks to build an absolute trust. He's not careful enough. This is a fault corrected by his son Malcolm later in the play, who is much less trusting of others. The irony here is that Macbeth, who incidentally Duncan does trust, is now planning to kill him. However, Macbeth then has reservations about murdering Duncan and is chastised by Lady Macbeth. She says, Thou wouldst be great, Art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. This idea is the central tenet of the Florentine Niccolo Machiavelli, who wrote an influential book of advice for rulers called The Prince in the early 1500s. He said that a ruler could not be effective without being ruthless. A very famous quote here, If it were done, when it is done, then to well it were done quickly. Macbeth wants to kill the king quickly, so that the consequences of the murder can be, metaphorically speaking, caught in a net, which is the meaning of trammel, so that he can then have the benefits of the murder without being held responsible. You might note here that Macbeth is still reluctant to be ruthless and to make plans to deal with the consequences of his actions. This is the first of the supernatural visions that afflict Macbeth and Lady Macbeth in the play. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Macbeth interprets this dagger in the air to be a sign that supernatural forces want him to commit the murder, yet it also terrifies him. And then after the murder, we see the magnitude of his crime conveyed in this wonderful image. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the green one red. Far from the ocean washing away the blood, the king's blood here will turn every ocean in the world red. The meaning of incarnadine is to turn something red or crimson. Other imagery in the play includes the idea that the order of the natural world is disturbed by Macbeth's actions. It is unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her pride of place, was, by a mousing owl, hawked at and killed. This, of course, is the reverse of what might be expected, where a falcon would normally be much more powerful than an owl. You'll also notice bird imagery here again. Now that he is murdered, Macbeth is haunted by one of the predictions made by the witches earlier in the play that he would be king, 
but Banquo's heirs will rule after him. This brings about paranoia, because he thinks he's unsafe. He says, to be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Macbeth needs to protect himself from anyone who might also kill him. This paranoia, in turn, prompts tyranny. The immediate murder of Banquo, and the eventual elimination of anyone who disagrees with him. This quote is by Macduff towards the end of Act 4. What? All my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop? Macduff has just found out that Macbeth has had his wife and children slaughtered. And you can probably hear the bird of prey idea again in one fell swoop. Now for those of you who've been counting, we've had our ten quotes, so treat this as a bonus quote. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sand and fury, signifying nothing. It follows the more famous tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow line earlier in this scene. And what we have here is a moment of futility. Macbeth perhaps thought that he might achieve greatness by killing the king and assuming power. But it has led him from a situation where he had real honour and respect, through guilt, paranoia and tyranny, to futility. Life is now worth nothing to Macbeth. He has undermined everything that gives life real value. Well, I hope that gives you an insight into this wonderful play, and thank you for listening to the complete guide to Shakespeare. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.